Hold on. Let me set this up because something is bothering me as good of a mood as I am in. And it is the it is largely the free pass that Kyrie Irving gets. And I talked to Rico about this a little bit this morning, not to take the starch out of the topic, but to just kind of get on the level. Just two dudes talking sports. Like, where along the line does a player who does everything wrong, does a player by anyone who covers the league knows he's a bad guy, where a player who turned his back on a team, turned his back on a city, turned his back on a fan base, then dodged every time he had to come back to town because he's a coward. When does that guy become the victim? We're in Detroit. It's one of the great sports towns in America. We always talk about home field, home court advantage. And the narrative, like the media is so out of control. Like this is why people hate the media. The media... Actually, a portion of it is making Kyrie the victim because, wait for it, the fans booed too much. Oh, the Boston fans won't let it go. And I'm sitting there laughing as a Celtics fan. Here's what you're asking Celtic fans to let go of before we get into this. And I want you to put the shoe on the other foot as a Detroit fan. Player does it to you. You tell me what you're letting go of. The guy goes out and films a commercial and superimposes his number in the rafters. And unlike the Pistons, we don't put everybody up there. All right? We don't put mediocrity up in the rafters. We don't put popular people up in the rafters. You want to get your number retired at the Garden? You got to be amazing. This guy says, I want to spend the rest of my career here. Guy takes the microphone. At the home opener, tells the fans, I'll be back if you'll have me. I'll resign. He goes on to have one of the most embarrassing campaigns from a leadership standpoint I've ever seen. He leaks multiple things to the media, ripping his young teammates for his own failure. Imagine throwing 20-year-old Jason Tatum under a bus because you can't close a game. Skips out on a game seven because he needed a nose job. Then he leaves the team high and dry. Dodges every chance to come back to Boston, even as a visitor, because he didn't want to face the music. So he comes back in game one of the playoffs. And you know why he's back in game one of the playoffs? Do you know why Brooklyn's the seventh seed? Because he was selfish. Straight up. He wouldn't get the pokey. So they're the seventh seed. Now, you've made choices. We've all made choices. We're past it. The reality, everybody else on that team did what they had to do. Except who? Mr. Sage-burning hippie himself. So that guy goes to Boston and gets booed without mercy every time he touches the ball. He's the victim? Isn't that what sports is? This guy's making $43 million a year. And I got to listen to him in the postgame. Mind you, after flipping off the fans no less than four times in the game. Birds everywhere. Birds everywhere. He goes into the tunnel after the game. A fan yells, Kyrie, you suck. He he goes, S my D U B. Fill in the blanks. It's on video. It's right there. The first word rhymes with duck. (laughs) The second word rhymes with a popular brand of pens. And the third word is bitch. Okay, so let's just get this straight. He then goes to the podium and does the where I'm from street reset. Oh, where I'm from. Oh, I'll look someone in the eye and see if they're about it. Yes, that 70-year-old tax attorney who's got the seats booing you. Yes, what are you going to do, Kyrie? Fight him? You're going to shoot him? You're going to call your your boys on him? Like, what are we talking about, Kyrie? You're a long way from where you're from. You stay at the Four Seasons and you fly private. You make $43 million a year. Nobody's trying to have the conversation about how tough you are. Cut it out. 
Oh, but they called me a bitch. I'm pretty sure you can find worse on ticket text right now. Deal. You get paid every two weeks. You deal. So here's my question. Where is the accountability? In what world is Kyrie the victim? I mean, for all the, the Charles Barkley, Shaquille O'Neal, Jalen Rose, I, I, forget Ernie Johnson, he hasn't had an opinion since the Reagan administration, but all the media that covers the NBA. How do guys just not come out and call it what it is? He's selfish, he's a con man, and he's one of these faux intellectuals. He wants you to think he's smart, but he's not. And just because he uses lots of words doesn't make him smart. That's called well, word Mike, he soup. Did attend Duke. He did where, attend Duke. Yeah, yeah. Well, where he's from, listen, <laughs> this guy is cancer. He is a cancerous player. So the selfish angle of it is, I'm being straight with you, he ought to be suspended for game two. Do I want him suspended? No, because I want him on that court. I want him to go have to go back to Boston after doing what he did in game one, after doing what he did in the tunnel, after doing what he did in the post game, and I hope the fans are even worse. I hope the fans are even more visceral. Because this guy is a con, and the people in Boston know it. The media won't do it. They just protect this guy. So, yeah, I'm being straight up. It's a sports topic that if we did a national show, we do. But I'll localize it for you because, listen, this is it's, it's like Burger King. Have it your way. I'm going to deliver for you. I think you ought to be suspended for game two. Flipped off fans four times. Tell somebody what they can do in the tunnel, which is absurd. Oh, Kyrie, you suck here. I'm pretty sure 15 people just told me I suck. Don't care. Got paid Friday. $45 million a year, and this water-carrying media who puts that they trade their integrity for access sits there. Screw this guy. And I'll tell you the other thing I don't like, and I can feel it coming. Everybody prepare for it. It was on the tip of his tongue yesterday, and you can feel certain media wanting to do it. I can't wait for the racial accusation. You know that's coming. Can't wait. Can't well, you know, it is wait. Boston. It is Boston, Mike. So, you know. <laughs> Pardon us. One of us is trying to do serious radio. The other sunning by the pool. No, Mike. Here's the I'm, thing. I'm angry, Rico. I can tell you're angry. That's why I let you go. In Kyrie's world, he is the victim. And if you want access, you're right. If, if you don't want Kevin Durant and you don't want – them to turn on you, you're not going to say anything. There it is. Because now, all of a sudden, Kevin Durant, we already saw he had the burner account, and he goes after people. Sure. So now you're going after his guy. He's going to take it personal. And, and, and guess what? Do it. I think it's what's great about sports. But when did we lose the ability to boo? When did we lose to scream things at players? Like, I wouldn't do it. And as long as you don't get racial, what's the problem? Oh, they called me a pussycat. And... 45 mil deal, yeah. bro. Yeah, what are you, this, nuts? This is the times where sometimes the city that you're in and their reputation comes to front. Like Detroit has a reputation. Boston has a reputation. Philly, New York. And you don't get the benefit of the doubt. No, and because they're great sports towns. That's why. Right. And that's why it's on the tip of their tongue, the whole racial thing. You can feel just it. Just because. Yeah, you can, because it's Boston. And you know and what's going to happen. Boston is the one city you can get away with Celtics that. are going to go out. Let's say they win game two. Let's say the fans are even more brutal to this guy. You know what his get-out-of-jail-free card is? Make that accusation, and you never have to back it up. And the city's reputation, people, don't give Boston the benefit of the doubt. You can feel it. And I'm just tired of it. The guy ought to be suspended for game two. You can't treat people that way. You want to yell back, hey, fine, you do whatever you want to do. I think it's stupid. You're an NBA player. Grow up. Oh, they're booing me. You flipped off people four times in a game. What are you, a 15-year-old sophomore in high school? You're compensated for the abuse. Yeah, and it's not even the first time you've been back to Boston. It's like, guy, what, what, we're, are we going to be doing this each and every time? Here's the thing. 
You let the fans have their say. You don't react to it. Eventually, it goes away. It'll never go away. Guess what happens next game? Oh, they're, they're going to amp this thing up yep. even more. Absolutely, Boston. and the fans should. But I think the league should act. Now, here's the topic that everyone will get involved with because I know that topic probably a little high level and barely any of you watch the game. Who's your Kyrie? Who is the player in your life? Like, I hate this man more than world hunger. I hate this man more than the weather, more than potholes, more than Satan. If Satan's real, don't even know. I hate Kyrie Irving. I hate everything about him. And ask anybody. You're not a good guy. Not some great guy. Bad guy. Bad guy. And he tried to just railroad the entire organization, the entire city of Boston, and his young teammates that he was supposed to lead. Screw this guy. I hate his guts. So I want to know who your Kyrie is. Unabashed, uncompromising, unwavering hatred of an athlete. Who is it? Everyone's got one. You just got to search your soul. And you got to be willing to admit that there's one athlete out there that you hate to that level. I'm telling you who mine is. You've known it for years. Nothing compares to Kyrie. Nothing. Jim Harbaugh is but a footnote. I can feel the hatred I have for Jim Harbaugh in a thimble compared to the bucket, the ocean, that is Kyrie Irving. He is number one on the history of this planet for me in sports. See, I've, I've often wondered, was it Kyrie or was it Gettleman? No, Kyrie. I'd, I'd move in, I with, I'd hate, move hate in with Dave Gettleman wow. compared to Kyrie Irving. Kyrie embodies everything I hate about sports. This player empowerment nonsense when guys don't deserve it. The apologizing for a fool. The, the empowerment of a, a child, a jackass. And then the guy goes out and is paid 40-some-odd million dollars and chooses he's the special little pony who doesn't have to do what everybody else did, and that's why his team is the seventh seed, and no one will say it. And then he gets up there in the postgame and tries to make it like he's going to fight people. Get out. Yeah, take it down the road. 248-539-9797. Ponder it. Marinate on it. Who's your Kyrie? And if you want to have the discussion, I'm dead serious about it. If the NBA had a brain, they'd suspend his ass. They won't do it. They don't have the chops. But imagine a tiger doing this to fans. A piston. A red wing. A lion. They'd be missing game action. Oh, no. Oh, I, Mike, I knew you were going to be shooting out of a cannon today. As a matter of fact, just full disclosure, people. Hey, Mike, how you doing? So, Kyrie, and then I just set the phone down. That's it. And Mike just went off. Nah, that's it. That's it, man. Passionate fans now are being thrown under a bus, and we're making a victim out of a child who makes $43 million a year. What a world we're in.